Good morning everybody, Tracy Brown here. I promised a quick video on social eating and I think the title is more appropriate in terms of what I'm going to talk about which is I want to give you some scenarios and some tips to be able to stay in your own lane when it comes to you know, eating out, eating with people, um, and all the things that come up with that because um, again, we uh, most of us know that a lot of our struggles are around eating and food and weight and worth and what people think of us and social currency and all those really um, kind of big topics, topics that most of, at least the people I work with are, are working on. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, I tend to think about this topic more when there's, um, you know, um, holidays that revolve around some food and we just are coming out of Passover and we had Easter this weekend and all those kind of things. And so, you know, more clients have been talking to me the last um, four or so days, five days about um, how they're going to eat and keep up their momentum and, and keep up their intentions and all those kind of things. So that's what we're going to talk about today. The first thing I want to talk about is um, I'll tell a story real quick. And this is not really related to the holidays. It's just a story of being around people who are dieting a lot. And so when I worked in clinical dietetics and nutrition, I worked in a dialysis center and I liked it. Actually, there's a, it was, um, if you're going to be a dietitian and you're going to do any clinical work, it's, it's pretty good. Um, but anyway, um, I worked with some really amazing people. Um, and it that's what made it this extra hard because these people are really nice and I like them. And I think every single one of them either all together or separately at different times were on a diet and very vocal about it. And it was all very fad, not f crash diets, but kind of like fad stuff. Like I remember one time a, a person who are again, friends with these people. So I'm not like dissing people or trashing people. It's just, this is what happened. Um, and I had to navigate this. Um, I remember that she was taking ally that, um, fat absorption pill. And it's, it's nasty little side effect is if you eat anything with you know, even if you ate like a little handful, like a little small bag of like potato chips, it would be enough to cause a symptom called anal leakage, which would mean it would poop would come out of you basically. Sorry, gross. I know it's first thing in the morning. I'm so sorry, but that's what happens uh, with this pill and it causes fat malabsorption. So basically you have diarrhea if you eat something with fat and that's the kind of stuff that was around all the time. Ugh. Anyway, lots of fad stuff happening around me and lots of food talk and lots of like you know, body beratement and all that. And I was, I was an intuitive eater at the time. This has been a long time ago, like 13 plus years ago. So I was an intuitive eater. Uh, and I was first training to do this work. Um, after I'd been you know, licensed, I was doing this really intensive three year thing to do eating disorder recovery work and teach att attuned eating and stuff like that. Anyway, um, you know, so being around that all the time was still hard for me because I didn't really have totally the confidence um, or even the language to always know what to say when people are saying this kind of thing. Because really, I just wanted to preach to them all. I wanted to say like, no, you don't need to do this. Like, be an intuitive eater and love your body. Um, and I kind of knew that wasn't going to go over well. So what do you do? So if you're in that situation and you're trying really hard to stay focused on your eating, some of the best things we can ever do is stay focused on yourself, which is hard because you're going to feel probably any, and if anybody resonates with these things, please give me a comment, like whatever that you understand. And you've been here is that it's really hard to do what other people aren't doing because there's a miss there with the connection. If everybody else is, let's say, you know, doing like a, I'm making it up because right now people don't do fat-free diets. They're more like lower carb or certain or no sugar or whatever. But then it was like eating less fat. And um, so let's say that you're at a table and everybody's trying to watch their fat intake and that's all you hear. It's going to be, you know, you're going to feel probably minimally a little bit like, oh, I don't have this to connect with them about complaining about how much fat is in this meal. You're not going to have that to share. Um and that's why it's so important, this inner work, not just on learning how to become like eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full, um, all that. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's super important, but it's a little bit on the surface. I mean, that's deep work, but learning how to be embodied with, I know what I need to do 
And no matter what happens with everybody else, I know what I need to do and I know what honors me the most and being able to stay in your lane about that. And so honestly, most of the time when people talk about diets and what they're doing and some changes, I don't really say much of anything at all because honestly, nobody gave me an invitation to put my two cents in. If they do, I will. And I'm very respectful and gentle about it, but I educate about how diets don't work and um, what has been the, you know, how long have things lasted and where they get from that and what were they trying to get and, you know, I go there. And so um, if I have an invitation for that. So that's what I suggest to you all is uh, stay in your own lane, stay focused on if you're doing meal planning, then stay focused on what you need to do, your exchanges, your whatever. If you're doing intuitive eating, stay focused on what you like to eat and what honors your body. And there's a two sides to this. There's, oh my gosh, I should eat less so I don't feel like I'm overdoing it. So you're comparing your food to others. Don't do that. Stay in your lane. What do you need to eat to be satisfied, to get full, to feel nourished? Um, all those kind of things. And also... You don't have to rebellion eat just because everybody else is only eating, let's say, salads. You don't have to be the one that you need to prove that you're not on a diet and that, like, all that, you know. So you don't have to do that either. Just You don't have to rebel and you don't have to try to eat, eat the least of what everybody else is doing because you'll end up just being dissatisfied, hungry, and really not connected to um, the parts of the conversations that you comfortably can be a part of. So that's really important. That's the social part. And if people are constantly talking about diets, it's important that you're, um, that again, you recognize if it's a situation where you just can't, you know that if you try to change the subject, it's not going to matter. It's going to continue that way. You might make decisions about in the future how much you eat meals with these people and maybe do other things instead more. You know, boundaries are super important. But um, I think the bigger picture is just, you know, stay in really in your lane. I guess, you know, I'm kind of keeping coming back to that. You have to stay really focused on yourself. And anything that comes up from that, if that's really hard, I really want you to think about taking notes. Meaning, come home from that meal, take some notes about the ways in which you were triggered or the things that came up so that you can discuss it with, um, yeah. Like someone like me, your nutrition therapist, your therapist, your your coach, your friend, somebody you trust, whatever, um, to get some bigger picture about what's actually going on. Because when we're food comparing, so any kind of food and body talk is I feel uncomfortable. It's always something that's coming up and arising within you that needs your attending, that needs your attention. And if we don't give that to ourselves, ourselves we're going to be in that repeated loop and make it seem like intuitive eating isn't working. It's just like, no, intuitive eating, it's hunger and fullness work. And it's eating with attention to not only nutrition, but also your, your needs for pleasure and connection, all those things. But when you know that stuff and you're still feeling desiring to like want to eat less than somebody or not eat fully what you want or just not honor what you want, then there's something bigger that's, that's coming up that this situation is bringing up for you and that you need to tend to. So make some notes, write it down, and do some processing with it. If you need help with it, let me know. Um, I think that's it for today. I mean, all kinds of, and I, I would, I really encourage people to set goals, to practice this stuff, practice these skills. I eat a lot out with my clients or we do virtual um, meals, those kind of things. I want you to have practice because if we don't practice, it doesn't get easier. Um, you can't avoid, you can't avoid, but your life will shrink and become small and, and we don't want that either. So, um, let's take some risk. Let's, um, pool our courage and, and get out there and start practicing eating out as well and noticing what comes up and get support for that. Um, I think that's it. And the last little bit, my new free gift, um, it's a body bashing decoding tool that's that I made Actually, I made it last year, and I've been working on this for a while, trying to get it out and make it look nice and, and be usable for you all. And so I'm going to put the link below. I'm really excited about it. I'm, like, I'm excited about a bunch of stuff. So you guys will probably see me posting more because I want you to have access to as many tools as possible, um, whether it's free or um, individual work or, or um, my, my school, my attuned eating for attuned living school. Um, you know, clients who have seen me before who've done some of my packages are going to get access to that for free. I'm real excited, so be checking your emails out for that. Um, but the school is actually um, monthly payments that are super low as well. So 
I, I want this to be accessible. The kind of work that we do in these videos and what I do in one-on sessions are going to be in that school, so I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm going to be, be putting lots of little links and pictures over the weeks that you can look at it, and, um, and there's lots of somatic stuff in it too, which I'm really excited about because I don't think that you can do full-on recovery from diet trauma and disordered eating without the embodiment work. I just don't think you fully get all the pieces you need, so that's why I'm adding all that in as well. So, all right. I will talk to you all soon, and if you have questions about this, you know, leave a comment below, tag me, and I'll be back, as well as um, get my free gift. I'm real excited about it. I hope you enjoy it. I want comments about that as well, if you liked it, if it was helpful. Um, even if you'd like me, I think I'm going to do a live about that, like going through it with people as well, so be on the lookout for that. So if you want to understand it better, I would definitely suggest you get the get the free gift, and I didn't think about that just now, but I will do that. I'll do a live and we can walk through it. So if anybody wants to be the volunteer to walk through it with me, we can do a dual um, little Facebook live and somebody's pictures on the side. So if you're interested in processing through this worksheet live on Facebook, um, message me and we'll set that up. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody, and take care. Bye.